scoid is characterised by large bully or blisters that tend to affect the groins, axillae, flexor surfaces of the forearms, anterior and inner thighs and the abdomen. They can also affect the oral mucosa, the tongue, cheeks and eyes and also the oesophagus. They may present with itching and irregular areas of erythema with central areas of clearing. The condition is most frequent in people over the age of 60 with no sex predominance and pemphigoid is an autoimmune disease. Pemphigoid is more common in patients with neurological conditions such as Parkinson's disease, stroke and dementia and it may also occur in patients with an internal malignancy. People with psoriasis are at increased risk of bullous pemphigoid, particularly if they are treated with ultraviolet light. And alagliptin for diabetes can also cause bullous pemphigoid to develop. And it is an IgG antibody to the hemidesmosomes that cause the structural damage to the skin, resulting the epidermis to separate from the underlying dermis, resulting in bulla formation. Consequently, the bulla is subepidermal and there may be associated eosinophil polymorphs and some spongiosis as well. Immunofluorescence shows a linear IgG and C3 pattern. Here is a skin biopsy of an early lesion in bullous pemphigoid. You can see that there is an accumulation of, of um, mononuclear and eosinophil polymorphs in the papillary dermis. And here is the classical histology of bullous pemphigoid. The epidermis has cleanly separated from the underlying dermis and the epidermis itself is intact with no acanthalysis as you see in pemphigus.